Hello, my name is Mark Taylor and welcome to the Education on Fire podcast. The place for creative and inspiring learning from around the world. Listen to teachers, parents and mentors share how they are supporting children to live their best authentic life and are proving to be a guiding light to us all. Hello and welcome to our live Education on Fire podcast. Um, This is going to be very exciting. One of the things I wanted to to do to develop the audio podcast was this ability to have a conversation so that actually you, when you're watching, when you're listening, if there's anything that comes up you'd like to ask, then it's a great way to be able to bring that through, bring it into, um, yeah, bring it into a conversation rather than just me asking all the questions and hopefully I'm able to steer those things normally um, I always like to think of it when I'm when I'm having these conversations as if I was listening and I was the one wanting to know sort of the next thing that's how I will often do it when I when we have our conversations on the podcast but this is a way for you to get involved for you to ask any questions so if you would like to ask anything if there's anything that comes up or anything that you'd like to know about ideal school then do um, put in the comments you can just write a Q colon and that way I can then sort of siphon through and make sure that I can make sure those questions do and I can bring those up on the screen if you just want to make a comment and have a chat going on as well that's absolutely fine feel pleased to do that but yes if you actually want it to be a, a, a question specifically answered on this um, on this show then then do write a, a Q colon first of all so if you haven't um, please do subscribe to the channel um, we're going to be doing more and more of these live live podcasts it's something which YouTube is specifically also gearing out even more that there's definitely more impetus from YouTube to have podcasts as a separate thing rather than just video as well so it's a very exciting time at the moment so yeah we're going to be exploring that more and more and more so please do subscribe also hit that bell for the notifications and then we're we're going to be going to be good to go so today I'm delighted to be chatting about Ideal School and I've already had the opportunity to record with Eric Franson who's um, the, the co-founder and, and runs the school and we'll be chatting to him in just a moment first of all. So I know already a little bit about the amazing work they're doing and the setup they're doing which I think is quite unique in, in so many ways. So let's bring him on, let's have the opportunity to find out exactly what Ideal School is all about. Hi Eric, thank you so much for being here first of all. Hi Mark, thank you so much. So I'm delighted that we've got some of your team with us today as well, which is going to be amazing. We'll have a chance to, let's say, to dive in a little bit more for what it's like for people who are a part of the school. But just give people that first sort of insight into, first of all, what it is you're doing, what makes you unique and and what you're able to bring to people. Well, yeah, again, thank you for the opportunity. Um, Yeah, we, Ideal School is a unique school. We are... um, a live Spanish immersion, what's a bilingual, Spanish-English immersion um, online school where we uh, connect students and amazing teachers from North America to South America and everywhere in between. And uh, live classes, not video-based, but they're live. And so we're, we're trying to take best teaching practices in a traditional school, apply them onto an online school with, uh, within the methodology of dual language, uh, which is under the umbrella of bilingual education. That's us in a nutshell. And we try to do it with a lot of compassion and, and um, just kind of a family feel of uh, really caring about the kids and the, and the families. Yeah, I love that. And it's one of the things which comes up a lot on the podcast one of the questions i ask often is the kind of what's something that you remember as your school education experience or teacher that you remember and so much of it is how a teacher saw me how a teacher made me feel how they gave me confidence in something and that isn't about necessarily the structure of how you learn a particular subject or whether it's much more that human to human contact so i sort of love that that's why it's sort of the heart of what you're doing yeah yeah it is and and really the magic of ideal school is the people that work with us um and so we have a few uh, three of them with us today but that's the magic of it it's the it's the people that you find that can connect with the vision you know it's that shared vision and again you just have really compassionate professional people that's the the magic of the school Fantastic. Well, that's perfectly queued up. Yeah. So let's introduce everybody. Um, Eric, I'll let you sort of do the formal introductions, sure. and yeah, and then we can we can hear from everybody and uh, and find out a little bit more about them. Exactly. He, um, so I'll start up in the upper right corner is uh, Miss Maria Carmen Gonzalez. I'll let her introduce herself, but she is uh, been with us for 
I think four years, almost four years, and uh, just an integral part. Uh, Ms. Gonzalez, do you want to say something about yourself? Hi, good morning, everybody. Uh, well, I would like to say that I've been at an ideal school and it's been the best time of my professional life. I I get in this job and the, the partners that I have always been looking for, people who share my vision about education, about making kids the central part of our school, you know, and being uh, caring and also helping students be the best they can be. Um, and besides that, I'm, I'm from Mexico. I'm very, very glad to be able to be part of Ideal School from my home. That's another advantage of the school. I get to do, to train teachers and to teach classes and to do everything that I love for, for in another environment, in, an, in a multicultural uh, place where I can get to meet wonderful children, wonderful families. We change lives at ideal school. And that's something I really love to do um, from home. <laughs> and I guess awesome. Yeah, that, thank you. I mean, it sounds like a fantastic thing. Like I said, I think it's probably something worth picking up just straight away is the fact that from your point of view as a team as well, it, you get that flexibility and that ability to have that sort of lifestyle as well as what it's like for the people that you're, um, the people that you're teaching. Indeed. I mean, I'm not only working from home, but I get to visit many other homes uh, from my computer. I, I go to many living rooms, kitchens and, and dining rooms. And I go to the places where their students are learning, having a great time, and they can also be part of this school at the same time. You know, it's it's something that it's amazing. you you got to be in one of our classrooms to get that feeling that environment of friendship and and love and caring and also joy for learning that is something that i've never seen before as we can see it at, at ideal school fantastic and eric i'll, I'll let you con continue around the introduction sure <laughs> sure and then uh, we have down in the bottom left corner mrs laura julio who's our second grade teacher and she's fantastic she's been with us a little bit less than miss gonzalez but been with us a long time so Go ahead, Ms. Gons, I'm Ms. Mrs. Julio. Tell us a little bit about yourself, please. Thank you, Mr. Francin. Uh, good morning, everybody. My name is Laura Julio. I'm from Colombia, but I live in Mexico City. So I'm like moving between Bogota and Mexico City. I have been working uh, with Ideal School for the last three years and a half. And it has been uh, such an amazing experience. Uh, I think that the teaching learning processes represent a challenge when it comes to incorporating certain elements that make them an innovative space that it effectively respond to the real world of, I mean, the globalized world dynamics representative of the era of information and communication technologies. So being part of an, an and being an active member uh, of an innovative project such as Ideal School gives me the possibility as teacher to adapt and optimize my pedagogical practices in order to promote and share with my students an authentic classroom environment focused on their needs and interests, and which allows the development of significant and active uh, learning. It is great. It is a great honor for me to be part of the Ideal School family. Yes, uh, Mrs. Julio is uh, is super professional. She just takes everything she does so so seriously and does such a great job of it. Thank you, Mrs. Julio, for the introduction. That's awesome. Uh, Mr. and we definitely um, last but definitely not least, Mr. Francisco Velasquez, he is uh, our asynchronous. So we have a program of supporting students who are not taking live classes. So we have two programs for students who are looking for live classes and students who are looking for not live so they can kind of be flexible and in, in when they take classes. And Mr. Uh, um, Velasquez is that coordinator and he's been with us about the same time as Mrs. Julio. I think you were hired, I'm almost, I think the same time or close to it. Uh, a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful team member as well. And Mr. Velasquez, what would you, also uh, a runner by the way, was in the Miami Marathon a couple months ago. So uh, if you look, 
yeah, a, a guy to be admired for sure. Thank you very much, Mr. Franzen. No, I love I love being an ideal school. Ideal school is more than just a school, it's a, it's a family. We all share together and we all do a lot of things together. So that's nice. I, I like it. As Mr. Francis said, yes, um, I am I am now working uh, in the asynchronous program. It's, it's amazing because you get to talk to other teachers and you get to connect with the students. Um, you, you get to grade homework and everything and at the same time see what are the differences between them. Also, it's great to mention that we the, we are helping and we are also in Central America, in Aruba. This is where the asynchronous school is. So Ideal School is expanding really quickly because we love what we do. And that is amazing. And also, also, I want to mention that I had the opportunity to also be a teacher. I actually started as a teacher as well. And I just remember, I have really fond memories of that. And I remember one one of the classes, uh, a lot of the students like wrote, uh, we love you, teacher Francisco, uh, on, on like a class or something. And that was amazing. It was like, just brought some tears out of my eyes. So no, it's, it's, it's more than just a school. It's, as I said, I, I, I already mentioned it, but it's, it's a family. Like uh, we love our kids. We love ourselves like as a, as a group. We all work together and we all help each other all the time and yeah and trust is something that is always in ideal school and that is something that is amazing and that i really really like and we all share the same mission the same vision and everything of what we do thank you i think that really came really comes across i mean even having just sort of had a conversation just before we came live it really did feel like it was that family atmosphere and, and that sense of kind of you all sort of welcoming each other in that kind of yes i kind of I, I know what's going on in your life and i sort of know what you're what what you're sort of how you sort of take part in in everything that you do and i think you, you can't kind of fake that that has to come from the the personality so eric maybe talk a little bit about how do you go about finding the wonderful people that are part of your team <laughs> well i can't <laughs> i can't give away the secret sauce because then uh, other people would find great people like them but no i <laughs> Uh, it, it, uh, honestly, there isn't a really, it, I think it's, I, I had a, a, a career in uh, public education uh, that included teaching and paraeducation and administration and it taught and I had some great, great mentors and it taught me what to look for. And I think the number one thing when you're looking for a great team, you, you got to find people that are one green and growing, meaning people that are wanting to, to learn. Um, that are lifetime learners. And then the other one is people who love students. And then everything else can be taught. You can learn everything else. As long as you're willing to and wanting to learn, wanting to grow, and you love people and you love students, then that's the magic. And that's really what we look for. And we look for people with experience. We don't. Ms. Gonzalez, everyone on this team has been on interview committees. But we, we don't interview people with a minimum of five years of traditional teaching. And of course, we'd like some technology ability as well. So we don't hire novice or, or beginners. And take, take me into the idea of what's it like when you've had that sort of traditional school setting? Um, and taking that into into a virtual world. I mean, I guess there are some things which you, you learn as a, as an in-person teacher, mm -hmm. which are, are transferable. And like you say, some things which must be different and that sort of skill set must evolve as you start to as you start to do more of it. Well, I mean, I, I don't I'm going to probably ask uh, Mrs. Julio or one of the other wonderful people on the panel to answer that. But I think there are there's a science and an art to teaching, Mark. Uh, that's universal, no matter where you where where you're working or what country you're in. But there's a science and an art to it. Um, and I think at Ideal, the the big challenge. I'll just say this and then let someone else answer. But uh, I think the big challenge is that we're transparent, right? Unlike maybe a traditional school. The like Miss Gonzada said that we're in people's living rooms. We're in people's um, offices and in their homes and they we see them and they see us and that that makes us have to be better because we're transparent and they know exactly what we're teaching and they know exactly what's going on and that that makes us be better i, I think and and using all those skills and experiences we've had as traditional teachers 
uh, and just applying it to an online uh, platform. I don't know uh, if one of you, I'm not sure who would like to maybe tackle that question or help a little bit. Yeah, um, I was thinking, Mr. Franz, and also that we have key elements that make the difference with a traditional classroom. So if I have to make a list, I will list uh, four key elements. So we need to have engaging topics. And um, when we talk about engaging topics, so we need to look for topics that are related to the students' needs and interests as well, no? The second key element is the attention time. So for example, in, since I'm the second grade teacher, like every 15 minutes, I'm changing the activity that I'm doing with my students. So in that way, I got a really good attention time. Also, we need an innovative design. So I think this is related to the term uh, flipped classroom. So it's a way to engage and to make uh, the most with uh, online class classroom, sorry. And what we are seeking for is to change the classical order that has been preserved for years, a teacher teaching and sending homework. Now it's a question of taking out the classroom, everything that the student can do in an autonomous way, uh, thanks to the videos, animations, and visual materials that, that we have for, for computers, laptops, mobile dev devices. And uh, at the same time, we as teachers, takes advantage of social interaction of having the whole group. And the fourth element that I will mention, like the key element is the knowledge, knowledge exploitation. So what I mean with this is how the student is able to connect what we are studying in class in the real life. You know? So I think this is the way that we can make, like we can be different from a traditional classroom. Yeah, that make that makes a, that makes a lot of sense, and and I guess my sort of my sort of follow up to that would be the idea of the the synchronous side and the asynchronous side, how that sort of works in in practice in 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 one in one of your classes, and and I guess also we should talk about how that works practically in terms of the language. You know, how, what percentage are you doing in one language or the other, or is it completely both languages at the same time? As someone who hasn't ever experienced that, I'm sort of fascinated how that sort of works. Well, I can tell you that um, our classes are in like a, I don't know, it's like, like a large spectrum of cultures. And, and you can hear both languages at the same time in a classroom because we have Latin American students and we have American students. And the wonderful thing it, is that that creates an environment with a context for students to practice. So when you're teaching a language, you don't have that opportunity to give the students time to, to have a conversation or to exchange comments, you know, and that is the context where students get to practice the language. American students get to learn Spanish from the and practice it with their classmates. And then when we teach Spanish, we, we go backwards. We our American our Latin American students they get to practice with our American students. So it's it's a real place to practice, right? So we have that opportunity in the classroom. Also, we have fantastic books. I mean, we, we have to work with um, online books when we work in an online school. So we have a portal where we, where students have access to their books and they are great. They take okay. math, English, and social studies in English, and then they take Spanish and science in Spanish. So they get all the subjects in different languages and they get a lot of practice investigations they have applications they have rooms for discussion and they are really developing skills for this century skills that they will use real practice in a real environment for a real professional life in the future yeah i i really love that and i think there's a couple of things that have come up in my podcast recently and one of them we were talking about virtual reality and how that was not just a way of kind of immersing yourself in the study but also immersing yourself in the social interaction online that whole sort of metaverse idea of not only am I going to be here to learn maths or English but also they're going to go and they're going to hang out and they're playing 
um, basketball or they're, they're, they're at the gym or, or they're wherever they happen to be. So they're able to interact and kind of be part and parcel of, of their social side. And what you just described there reminded me of that, that sense of, you know, your conversations and the way that your interaction is, is so socially based, which I think, like I say, it's where you earn, where you learn the most, but also because it takes the pressure off of kind of that old-fashioned way of kind of that direct teaching doesn't it? it is that kind of immersing yourself in the culture in the languages which makes the the biggest difference i think to people um especially as they're sort of progressing i always say that we are we are preparing i'm sorry we are preparing citizens digital citizens for the future we are really making students be responsible of what they do in the com their computers and also how they use their gadgets and, and learning how to investigate properly, how to take that investigation to another level and then draw conclusions. It's incredible what they can do in both languages and, and what they will be able to do in the future little by little. I I'm sorry, I think I interrupted someone. Yeah, no, I just wanted to say that, um, and it's also something that is amazing, is that um, we, as human beings, and because we are life classes, uh, we adapt, uh, our school adapts to each student. So if the level of a student is too high, we take it down. If the level of a student is too low, uh, we, we just adapt. We just adapt to them, and we do high, high, low, low, and then depends. And we work, uh, each student is considered a human being and we treat them as, as that. Uh, we, it's not like we just, I mean, we have, of course, we have a syllabus and everything, but it's not that we don't adapt depending on the individual. And that is what makes everything wonderful because students feel like they are hurt. And that is something that uh, not always happens in schools, that each student is hurt individually. Yeah, that, I mean, like I say, that's incredibly important. And Eric, take us into maybe the, the range of pupils. We've sort of talked about some of the, the geographic areas. Is it just purely from where they're living that it's important and that they're coming to you? Or is it also sort of from a social standpoint or, or maybe an, an environmental one or, or a kind of a lifestyle reason that, that online school is, is an important factor, Just not just in terms of sort of it being sort of dual language, but also that ability to interact in, in this particular way rather than being on site? Well, you know, I, um, Mark, that's, that's a good question. I, I think that for me, I've, I just want to have a large outreach um, to let people know that, that this possibility exists, that it's, that it is possible. And I kind of feel like the, the Wright brothers, you know, in America, when they built an airplane and, and the, they took it over the Atlantic, I kind of feel that way that to do something that is transatlantic, something that can reach all, all around the world um, and show that you can have effective traditional uh, uh, best teaching, best learning on an online platform. That's what I wanted the world to see. Uh, we we are we welcome students from anywhere that are looking for this. So we're happy to take anybody from anywhere. Uh, we've had uh, people, we even had a family that was, they, they took their school, they were in Mexico, for example, they moved to Israel and they adapted and they made it work. Um, so it, it it's possible, it just depends on uh, one, you know, a person's needs and and uh, what they're willing to uh, to sacrifice. Because to me, uh, ideal, I, a little bit off, but I'll get back to that question. But ideal to me is freedom. It it, it provides freedom. It provides um, a freedom to move, a freedom to visit grandparents and take your school with you. Uh, we have a family who's going to be moving soon to South America. They live in North America. They're going to be moving to South America. They can take their school with them. They don't have to worry about finding a new school, finding new classmates, finding new teachers, new systems. It's a, it's an ability to be free. We are, I think our families come from a wide spectrum. There's people who have migrated from one country to another and that would like that consistency. There are families who uh, I think initially came on because of uh, the, the COVID situation. Um, and then they realized that it's a good it's a good school. It's not just a temporary situation. It's something that's been a benefit to their families. So I don't know if that answered your question completely, but you tell me, Mark. 
yeah no i i think i think that's really important and i think for people to hear and and people who are who are watching it's that sense of I've never thought about this. I mean, I guess there'll be some people who are kind of, I'm looking for a solution, like you say, because we're moving, because our situation is such that I want to be able to do it. And I know that we're mm -hmm. going to be moving around the country or, or changing countries or that kind of thing. But there's also people who are going to be thinking, like I say, maybe the pandemic being an integral part of that. I know there's another way, but I'm not quite sure what that way is. Um, and online used to look a certain way. And I think in the pandemic, it was very much people kind of trying to do the best they could with the situation and, and the understanding that they had. And that's different now with, with people having online schools, which are set up purposefully with real sort of purpose and understanding and a real kind of you know like i said a real sort of skill set but also a family atmosphere it's not just about we're doing it because we have to we're doing it because we want to because we understand that we can deliver something that maybe that wasn't the case before and so yeah i think what you said there really sort of ties into exactly how all those sorts of things are and um we should probably mention also the fact that i'm assuming that there's a cost involved uh, um and to, to sort of be part of that so how, how does that work from your point of view because i know like you said um on our audio recording that we've done which is yet to be release but we'll have a description to that as well um in terms of being able to help people if needed well uh, again um we we didn't start uh this school um at looking at it so much as as a business uh we looked at it as um trying to show the world that this there was a possibility to do online schools differently and this was prior to covid is when we we uh, we started and so we uh we didn't start it as thinking this is a business venture we looked at it as we want to create and we're talking about education we want to so with that said we um we do have a cost of course and you can go to ideal school that education uh, you could go to the admissions tab on the menu, and then you could choose the program that works best for your family. Uh, if you live, good news is that if you are um, a resident of Arizona and New Hampshire, they have uh, voucher programs, uh, different financial programs through the state government, and we're uh, licensed vendors. And so uh, in those cases, those families that qualify, they don't have to pay anything, Mark. Um, and we're always uh, looking for other state programs um, that help families. And we are always willing to uh, give financial assistance. And so there's actually a button on that same admissions page. Uh, if families need uh, financial assistance, we're always um, open for uh, to try to help as much as we can because we want to spread this ability to as many families as possible. And so when you're teaching, um how many sort of people might you have in any given any given class and, and and how do they run is it sort of one one after the other throughout what would be a traditional school day in terms of that kind of um this is one class the next class the next class obviously you haven't got to move between the physical buildings or uh, do some people sort of come into one particular subject and then they might not come for another subject but mm -hmm. then come in again so how, how does that sort mm -hmm. of work um from that sort of practical yeah. sense yeah, yeah, that's a good question. It's yeah, it's almost like what you just described. It's um, we have some families that are with us for the full day, and we teach um, the basic basic subjects. Uh, uh, and this year we're doing kinder to eighth grade, and next year we will add ninth grade, and we're building up every year until we get to twelfth grade. Uh, but yeah, they have uh, they have classes like you would in a traditional school. So at a certain time, you come in to uh, say English language arts, and then you'd have a break, and then you'd have let's say math, and then you'd have a little break, and then you'd have uh, science, and then you maybe that'd be your lunch time, and then you come back, and then you do Spanish language arts. And we do have families that come for one class, or maybe two or three classes. Um, some families are homeschool families, and they simply want their student to get a class in math or English or Spanish. Does that make sense? Yeah, it definitely does. And um, I'll just, um, just a, a reminder that if you do have a question that you want to ask um any of the people here then 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 do just put a q code on stick them in the comments and we've we've had some amazing comments so far i'm really glad that people are, <laughs> are really are really enjoying this and um and you can't get a much better um testimonial than that so i think that's absolutely fantastic um so what i'd like to know from each of you i think is what's the takeaway that you have being part of ideal school from from a kind of a, 
I guess a teaching point of view, but as, as a team member, you know, when you sort of pack up for the day or or you've sort of done your sort of semester or whatever, what what is it that you think this is the reason I'm here? This is this is what I've been able to to to, to help people with or support that kind of gives you something that maybe you've not been able to experience before. Well, as I said, <laughs> okay, go, go ahead, go ahead, Frank. No, as I, as I said before, it, it's, it doesn't feel like work. It feels more like a family and it's just something nice to do. It's like, uh, it's, it basically feel, basically feels, feels good to do it. And the retribution that you get from, from my, from my, from my colleagues, from the students, from the other teacher from Aruba, uh, from the students, when I see their homework and everything, it just, it feels good. I guess this good feeling is what uh, keep us or keeps me motivated as well. And I'm pretty sure everybody, I can talk for everybody as well. Well, what I, I, I my feeling after the end of the day is a lot of pride. I. I had the opportunity to go to several classes along the day to assist teachers or to provide some help with technology or other things. So I, I get to see kids from different grade levels growing, blooming, you know, I because I visit one class in March and then I visit it again in May and I see the change, you know, I see the, the kid handling the, the tools. I see the kids going to a breakup room, discussing a topic, and then coming back to the teacher and explaining what they discovered together in one room. I see kids learning how to read and write in kindergarten. And, and it's, it's a sensation of pride and also joy. I know for sure we're changing lives. We, we get feedback from parents, which is great, but I, I get to see it on the front line, you know? to see those kids really, really growing, learning, being joyful, because every classroom, it's, it has this sensation of joy and, and, you know, noisy classes where people are enjoying, but they are also learning. And there is some kind of organization. Every classroom takes the personality of the teacher. So it's wonderful. And uh, it's like every other classroom, just remove the walls. And, and it goes beyond, you know, with more, more, many more uh, technology um, um, applications, gadgets, and much technology. But it's great. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more, Mark, with my uh, colleagues. It, it doesn't feel like you are uh, coming to work, no? Like you are forced to work because you have to pay bills. It's more the sensation of having fun doing what you love the most, you know? So every time I, I connect in the morning, I'm going to meet my 15 students, and this is going to be an amazing experience because they are sharing with me all the things that they have in here, no? So I think one of um, the most engaging, engaging things that are, or comments that I have received from my students a uh, uh, couple of days ago, we were talking about jobs, professions, what do they want to be? And one of my students told me, I want to be a teacher, but I want to be like you. So it was like, oh my gosh, you're like changing lives. No, it's not, they are just my students. They are my kids. Uh, I, I definitely love being with them every single day. And I learn from them a lot, you know, how to be patient, how to be as, as um, Francisco told us, how to be heard, how to be loved. And if you treat them the way you want to be treated, so you are gonna get really good things from, from them. Uh, they are so engaged, they are participating, they are talking about the topics that we are working in class. And another thing that I really enjoy is the commitment that parents have about the education process of their kids. As we are really transparent, so our class is in the in the living room, in the dining room, in the in the kitchen, in the uh, uh, bedroom. So all the time, parents are paying attention what we are teaching, what we are working. So this is a way they uh, they are more involved with the process, and I think this is a, a really good success of our school. Yeah, I love yeah. it, and. 
it, it, it sounds it sounds amazing and, and it really cut, sort of comes across and um and eric what would be your sort of final words of of wisdom or, or, or passing comment that you'd like people to take away well you know i i i don't have any words of wisdom so much i, I would just say that um i i i'm just so proud to be part of of ideal school um I don't like I echo what the, the other three wonderful people said. I don't feel like I go to work every day. Um, I feel like this is a it's a it's an organism that's kind of taken its own life that just continues and it's just part of part, it's fun to be part of it. Uh, it's a lot of work. Um, it's probably they would all say it's probably very difficult uh, teaching, but it's very fulfilling because we're all very supportive of one another. We genuinely care about each each one of our team members and all the students and families. We really, really do care. And we, I think everyone here and everybody else on the team are really heroes, doing a really, really hard job, but doing a great job of it. And uh, I just look forward to the the growth of Ideal. Um, and, uh, and I'm just really grateful to Mark for the opportunity to come and share a little bit about uh, about our school and i hope people come and visit go to our website idealschool.education go to our facebook and instagram check out some of the videos on our youtube and um and learn a little bit more about us and i would say you talk about the 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 price i wouldn't let the price be an obstacle for anybody we've always tried to accommodate and work with families who are really interested in this type of education so again, thank you, Mark, so much for the opportunity. Oh, absolutely my pleasure. And um and please thank you all for being here. I've really enjoyed meeting you all. Um do stay on the line because we can have a very short conversation once that once the broadcast sure. is finished. But yeah, thank you so much sure. for being here and sharing all sharing all of your, your you. wisdom and everything. So just a reminder again here, that's the, the website that you need. Um idealschool.education. That gives you everything that you everything that you need, all the places to go, all the places that you can like say get involved, um, all the social stuff and and sort of find out more about what they about what they are and what they're trying to do um and i think from my point of view the reason i wanted to do this was because so often there's a website you can look at so often there's marketing tools there's various things where you're trying to find out information but what you never get is the personality of some of these things um and it's having these conversations it's meeting the people at the heart of, of what they're doing what they're creating which i think comes across from a conversation which is why i love creating the podcast and also now being able to do this live especially sort of through the video format we get to meet people and to see people and i think that sort of visual also adds an extra level which is absolutely fantastic so thanks so much for watching um as we said you can put some comments below and we'll kind of feed those back in as well but do make sure that you go and check out the website and i look forward to being able to bring you some some more fascinating conversations very very soon